Today on Forbes, this humanoid robot could build your next Mercedes. Humanoid robots are having a moment. Amazon is testing out bipedal robots called Digit from startup Agility Robotics in its warehouses. Figure AI recently raised a $675 million mega round at a $2.6 billion valuation to develop humanoids for BMW and others. And Elon Musk is pitching Tesla's futuristic Optimus as one day being able to help assemble cars, even though the only demo bot he's shown so far appears to be a human-operated one. That's just a few of the more than a dozen companies, including Norwegian firm 1X and Sanctuary AI, that are developing humanoids with the promise that they, unlike task-specific robots, can do many different things, just like humans. For the founders of Aptronic, a small University of Texas at Austin spin-out, that makes a humanoid called Apollo, the newfound buzz is surprising. They've been building a humanoid robot that can pick up items and move boxes for the past eight years, with, until recently, only $28 million in total funding, a tiny fraction of what's now pouring into the space. And until this spring, when they raised more funding, Aptronic had actually brought in more in revenue than it had raised so far, more than $30 million. Co-founder and CEO Jeff Cardenas said, quote, It's interesting to see everyone hyping something they said was dumb just two years ago. Aptronics Apollo stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighs 160 pounds, and has an electronic display on its chest. It has a human-shaped head with eyes that house cameras atop a human-like body. Its hands look like human hands wearing thick black gloves. The robot, now on its eighth version, can bend at the waist and knees and carry around up to 55 pounds. This is thanks to Aptronics researchers' focus on the actuators that power it, which have gone through some 40 different iterations. Each robot has 32 actuators. Having worked on Apollo for years, Aptronic is expected to release its ninth version before year-end. The new Apollo will be sleeker in appearance, with no visible wires, a larger battery, and a mouth that's a screen that can change expressions. For now, it's focused on the most basic of tasks, moving boxes, industrial totes, bins, and other materials, an endless task for manufacturers and warehouse operators that can't find enough workers. Cardenas was excited to have signed up Mercedes to test one robot in a plant in Hungary. It carries a tote with the car's immediately recognizable star to the production line. The company also has agreements with Terex, a $3.7 billion market cap maker of materials handling equipment, which is also an investor, and with $5.8 billion market cap logistics giant GXO, plus a dozen other companies that Cardenas declines to name, citing confidentiality agreements. He said that Aptronic is talking with some 60 potential customers, and that he expects to be ready to move beyond pilot projects to a commercial launch by the end of 2025. By comparison, Figure AI recently released the second version of its second humanoid, and said this week that the robots had passed a test at its pilot with BMW by inserting sheet metal parts into specific fixtures at its Spartanburg plant. Humanoids' commercial value lies in their potential to do multiple tasks, switching easily between them in an unstructured environment. For example, moving bins in the morning and unpacking boxes in the afternoon. At least 16 established companies are making robots that walk on two legs or roll about on a base but have workable arms, according to data from Interact Analysis, a UK-based research firm. And that number is growing. Spurred by advances in artificial intelligence, price declines in robotic arms, and a shortage of blue-collar workers. Goldman Sachs has predicted that the market for humanoids could reach $38 billion by 2035 as the technology keeps getting better and costs come down. For full coverage, check out Amy Feldman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.